Hello and welcome to Sales Manager Training. My name is Josh Phillips. In this training, we have a lot of key functionality that will assist you in your inside or inside CRM on a daily basis. I'm going to pass the I'm going to pass the headset off to Michael Dodds here. You guys know him very well. He's a great trainer, and he has probably trained a lot of you already. Here's Michael. Thank you, Josh, for that great introduction. Good morning, everyone. I hope the weather's staying nice by you um, and your summer's going well. We got a lot of great content to get to today. So without further ado, let's jump into the agenda. Our agenda is quite long today because we got a lot of material to cover. So I'm just going to touch on a few highlighted information uh, pieces that we're going to cover today. Uh, one of those is the importance of having correct information in your data load and then also some common errors that you'll see in that data load file uh, when it comes back to you. That way you can understand troubleshooting a little bit better. Adding new departments, product segments, and product categories, some key, key items that we'll need to know from you to add those items, and also where those various departments, product segments, and product categories affect the data in CRM loading goals and how they work in CRM. It's another big topic that we're going to cover. Then we're going to go over reports, dashboards, advanced finds, so really that data extraction and manipulation and really analysis of your data to help you uh, as a sales manager motivate your users and get to your goals. And then we're also going to touch on a couple of uh, key features, suggestive cell and um, also touch on the iPad app and kind of how it's best suited for you as a manager and what it was created to do. And then we'll end the day with the importance of utilizing your data and then some questions. So first we're going to start off with what does the oil and gas product support include? So in other words, what what can you contact us here at Ledgeview Partners to help assist with? End user product support. So that's really any all end user questions. So any questions your users have or your power users have. Performance issues, errors that you're running into, syncing issues between the iPad app and CRM or between the Outlook client and CRM. Anything and everything dealing with CRM, come to us. We are happy to help. We love receiving your questions, and we love helping you use the system better. End user CRM client support. Again, anything with CRM, anything that touches it, the Outlook client, the, uh, the web client, the iPad app, any of those items come to us. We're happy to help. Release support. So any new service releases and roll-ups that are on the server, we take care of that for you. Um, the oil and gas environment in general. We monitor and maintain that CRM environment anytime there's an issue with CRM or anytime um, maintenance is required. We take care of that for you. We make sure your product is up and running for you. Future rollout services, Ledgeview will assist in the client, client in rolling out any product features. So a lot of you use the sales process. And what that is is it's lead to opportunity, creating the account and contact. Now there are other features like the uh, equipment management and station maintenance, sta station management. Excuse me. Those are two really newer features that I haven't seen a lot of marketers get into. If you have any questions on those or getting information and set up to use those, we're here to help. Also, one other future rollout that we help with is any time there's new product features that we roll out here in our enhancements, we help set those up for you. We make sure it's tested, it's ready to go, and, and any questions you have for us regarding those, come to us. We're happy to help. Now, I did notice that we do have a question from Kurt, so I'm just going to jump in here and I'm going to unmute Kurt. All right, Kurt, go ahead. What question did you have? You know what? I, I didn't. I must have clicked on something. I'm sorry. Not a problem. And just as a reminder to everyone, if you do have any questions, there's a hand, there's a hand icon to raise your hand. If you have any questions at all 
throughout this entire presentation. Just raise your hand. What we'll do is we'll take you off mute and then you can ask us your question. If you don't feel like speaking to the group and you just want to write out your question, there's a questions pane within your GoToWebinar control panel. Just ask your question and we'll, t we'll stop during at a stopping point and we'll address that question. All right, so that was what was included in the oil and gas product support. I want to touch on what's not included. So the extraction of data from the back office system, so your ERP system, and loading that into CRM, the actual process of getting it from your back office system to us, that's usually done through a third party or an internal person at your organization. Actually loading that client's data onto the FTP site, Again, that's usually handled through your third party. Hosting of the CRM email router. Now, some of you do have an on-premise exchange server. If you had that, you're usually going to want to have a CRM email router. If you do, we can help you set that up, make sure it's up and running. But the hosting of that would actually be on your side. Any custom modules that are handled in a separate statement of work, so anything you want to add on to CRM, you know, like third-party modules like email marketing, that's like click dimensions and act on. Implementation and support of Office 365. Now Office 365 is connected through a portal, but we are actually here to help support with the CRM portion of that. So we wouldn't help with the implementation or support of the actual Office 365 portion. Installation of any new hardware or operating system. So if you're going to Windows 10 from Windows 7 or 8, that would be more of an internal item. Um, we can give you advice on how that's going to affect CRM. If you have any questions, we can definitely help with that. And then application specific duties. What that simply means is anything that you do as a, as a part of your daily job um, in terms of you know, loading those goals or um, putting an item through the sales process. Those items we don't help you actually do, but we are definitely here to help you train if you have any questions on how to do it. We can show you how to do it. That way you'll know how to do it in the future. I also want to touch on one thing before I move on. If you have any questions, you know, like I said, raise your hand in the GoToWebinar control panel and we will unmute you. Once we've unmuted you, I'll ask you to, to talk and ask your question. You can also, again, type your questions directly into the question section of your control panel. Next, I'm going to jump into the sales process. So I'm going to do a walkthrough of the process of qualifying a lead to an opportunity, and then also how that creates a contact and an account. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into CRM. I'm just going to pull this over from my other screen. That's why it's just taking a minute. So within CRM, this is your main ribbon bar up here at the top. To get to a new entity, you simply click on this three lines. It's your main drop-down area. And then you would want to click on Sales and then Leads. Now, I do understand not everyone has your users create leads. It could be created by um, a specific person in your organization or um, for different various ways in which you're using leads. But what I'm going to show you how to create a lead. Most important thing to keep in mind is everything really starts with a lead if it's a newer customer, if it's a new customer. So we're going to click on New. And this brings up the, the information rather quickly. It's just going to have a minute loading the items here. One thing I do want to make sure to note is if you see this lock icon at the top, this is going to stay locked. You cannot qualify an item until you've entered all the required information on the lead and saved it. So we're going to start off with the first name, and we're just going to put in my name. So we're going to do Mike Dodds and our company will be LVP. It's always important to put in as much information as you can because the more information you have in CRM, 
the more use you're going to get out of CRM. I kind of call this sales process the meat and potatoes of CRM, so, so it's like your dinner. This is where you're spending most of your time. You're entering the most amount of data. This is where your sales process is going in leads, opportunities, accounts, and contacts. So the more information you enter into those entities, those records, the more you get to use kind of the fun stuff that we're going to go over later, which is the advanced find, the reports, the charts, and dashboards. Because without this information entered into CRM, those dashboards and reports do you no good because there's no information to pull. So you want to make sure that you have an email address entered, their phone number, because again, once you qualify this lead, it's going to pull into a contact. And with a contact, you're going to, going to want to be able to email them and call them. So we're just entering our phone number and email address. The other really important piece to note is department. It's kind of up here on the top away from it, but the department and industry are required fields. And you want to make sure you fill out department before you go to lead source. So in this case, we're going to go with fuel. So I just typed in fuel and I tabbed over. So it's going to automatically put in fuel. Industry, we're going to go with the design industry. And then right here in the middle is lead source. Lead source has four drop down, four drop down items. If you change your department, this listing of lead sources could possibly change depending on how you set up your CRM lead source options. They're driven based off of department. And if you ever select other, it's going to bring up a really great item here, other lead source. So if you wanted to put in trade show and then the date, you know, if it was 9, 20, 16, or 15, excuse me, we're not to October, uh, September 20th yet. And then we're going to move down here to our address. All that's required here is your city and your state. I highly recommend entering the full address if you know it because that way it will pull over to the account and contact screen. So we're going to enter our address. Now that we have all the required fields and all the information we know as today set, we're going to click Save. And down here in the bottom right corner you can see that it's saving. That's just an, an indication that you know that everything is working. So now that we've saved our lead, our false button will change away. I apologize for the technical difficulty. My, this is a test environment, so sometimes we do get an error uh, with it. So I'm just going to refresh this back to my lead. So I'm going to jump back into my lead. And once we have the lead open, as you can see here, we've got all of our information entered. It just takes a minute for it to load. And then under Qualify, we're going to change this to Yes. Important thing to note, you don't want to immediately click Next Stage. If you just click Save, and I did that in the, upper, the lower right corner or in the upper left, once you hit click Save, it's going to start qualifying this lead. It's going to create the account, the contact, and the opportunity. That's why it takes about 5 to 10 seconds to create, to generate and go to the opportunity screen. Now that it's pulled us over to the opportunity screen, all that information we entered on the last page, on the lead page, has pulled over. So the potential customer of LVP. As you can see, it's clickable now, so it's an actual account. Contact, Michael Dodds, he's actually a contact now instead of a lead, so he's clickable. He has his own entity record. Product segment. What segment are you going after with this customer? We're actually in the lubricants department here, so I'm going to go after antifreeze. That means this entire opportunity is based on the product segment of antifreeze. One thing to note is down here, if you want to split up this opportunity into multiple product segments, click the plus button. And it's going to bring up a new screen of product segments. And what this will allow you to do is enter a new product segment and then how much of the estimated revenue, gross profit, and units are going to go to this other product segment. And you can enter multiple of these. 
I'm going to point out some key items to make sure that you that you have your users enter because it's going to affect you as a sales manager and the reports and dashboards that you can run. Estimated revenue is very important and estimated gross profit and estimated units. So I highly recommend keeping those filled in. And so we're just going to take a minute and fill in this information. And then estimated close date is a very key item. Because that way you as a manager know when you're expecting this, this revenue that we think we're going to win, when's it going to come in? When are we going to see the sales dollars start to roll through the door? So let's say we're going to close this at the end of this month, so 831.16. And this will also help you with advanced fines that you want to run if you want to see what's closing in the next 30 days for your sales team. That's going to be driven off of this estimated close date. That's why it's so important to have in there. So as you fill this information out, this becomes key to you as a manager because it's going to allow you to pull the analysis data to help your team. Then your users will go for, through the various stages of qualify, needs and solutions, presentation, activate and transition. Activate and transition is where they're going to actually be able to close it as one. If for any reason at any point the opportunity is lost, you do not have to wait until the activate and transition stage. You can close it as lost at any time. Just simply click the close as lost button. We're going to jump back into our presentation. Next we're going to touch on the default values for those opportunities. So those different stages that I showed you, the qualify, the needs and solutions, the presentation and activate and transition, those are your various stages. So you can set the different days that they should be remaining in those categories, in those different stages. Once you have those stages set, once you know how long they should stay in there, you're going to want to notify Steve of that during your oil and gas setup portion. But if for any reason you feel, you know, this really isn't working for us, we need to change those dates contact us here at CRM Support, we'd be happy to change that for you. Next we're going to jump into the importance of having correct information in your data load. When you have correct information in your data load the first time, it allows the data to upload to CRM. You're not going to receive that error report, that invalid records report with items to fix. You'll still receive it, but there won't be any items on it to fix. So all your data uploaded. So if you have a user that sold a really, had a really big order yesterday, they're going to see it the following day because it went in that nightly data load. It prevents um, you or your users from needing to update CRM or the back office ERP system. And then accurate data, as I said, is going to be consistently reflected in CRM. Those orders, um, new accounts, they're going to be reflected in CRM consistently and as soon as it's created or as soon as the next day, I should say. Now, errors do happen. We all know that it, it's, un, it's not preventable, or excuse me, it is preventable, but you're not going to prevent every single one from coming through. So some examples of some errors that you're going to come across is the account number is not in CRM or the account is inactive. This is going to show up in your account section. So if you have an account number in your back office ERP system, but it hasn't been set up in CRM yet, or it has, but that account's been deactivated, that's when you're going to receive this error. Once you have an account set up in your back office system, you want to have somebody with a proper security access to update the account number in CRM. All they have to do is go into the account number, update it, and click Save. The account number is what talks to your back office system to pull in the account information. More than one account with the same account number exists in CRM. That's another very common error that we come across. This is simply means there's a dupli duplicate account number in CRM. Just need to make the adjustment. Either there's two of the same account in CRM and you can merge them, or Simply the account number was entered incorrectly. 
one of the more confusing errors, error messages that we see is account was not sent. This simply means there's an account number in CRM. Somebody's gone into the account number section in CRM and updated it. But that account number does not yet exist in your back office system. So the data load's trying to move it over, but it's saying, hey, there's no information connected to this in your back office system for me to move over. So simply set it up in your back office ERP system. When the data loads uh, runs the next night, it'll pull the information over. This next one is tricky because it sounds a lot like our first error. Account was not found or inactive. You're usually going to see this in like a product or order history section, so something that's referencing an account. So that account that that order history or that um, or our product is referencing is not in CRM. It wasn't found or it's inactive. So simply make sure that you have the correct information in your back office system or make sure that it's set up in CRM, put in that account number, then they'll be able to connect and associate. Another fantastic tool that we can do for you, you here at uh, LegendU Partners is your opportunity and account entities. This is an area where we can customize your fields for you. So any field can have the following two customizations made to them, but only again in the account and opportunity entities. We can change the displayed label. So if you don't like the way a certain um, field is stated, so let's say price payment terms, if you wanted to change that to pricing structure, you can simply have us change that displayed name. Just let us know, I want to change payment terms to this display pricing structure we can make that change. One thing to note is pricing structure will appear first, payment terms will just appear in parentheses next to it. We can also make items business required, which means you have to enter that information before saving. Business recommended, that means it puts a little um, blue cross next to the next to that field saying, hey, this should be filled out, but it doesn't require it, or optional nothing next to the field. We can make any of these changes to simply let us know the field, the entity, the field, and what you would like to make change to it, and we'll take care of it for you. Now I know a lot of you have been letting a lot of new users lately, and Josh has been doing an excellent job getting those users added for you. So I just wanted to take a minute to kind of recap and refresh on the process of adding new users. If you ever have a new user um, that needs a CRM license, there's a master user list that we send to you after every time we make an update to your user based on information sent to us. We'll send that back to you with the most updated information. Once you have that, if you add a new user, just add that user to the list of that spreadsheet and make sure you fill out all fields. Now I know some, sometimes you're not going to know their mobile phone number or their fax or simply don't want it in CRM. You can leave those types of items blank. But some key ones that we do need to know besides their name and username, which is usually their email address, is their security role, their Dashboard 97 access. And Dashboard 97 is a long running report section, so it gives them access to my information or access to all information. We just need to make sure we have that information. And then sales area. Are they inside sales or are they outside sales? The reason those are so important is because they affect CRM and what the user will see. So we want to make sure we have that right. Once you have that spreadsheet completely filled out, just send it to CRM support at ledgerpartners.com. We'll get them set up for you. Now, if for some reason a user leaves and you want to remove their license and deactivate them as a user, just send us the name of the user you wish to remove. Now, a question we, we will ask is, do you want the employee ID to remain in CRM? What that simply means is if in your back office system you're going to leave that employee ID, you're not going to reuse it with another user, but you want information to still flow down and connect to that user, just state that you want to leave the employee ID. Our standard process is to 
remove the employee ID before we remove their license. The next section I want to go into is adding new departments, product segments, and product categories. Now adding a new department is more of a rare occurrence, but it does happen. So if you are going into a new line of business um, and you want to add a new department to reflect that information. Some items that we're probably going to end up asking you is what existing items from your other departments need to be associated to this new department? That way you're not recreating the wheel, just let us know which ones are going to flow over to this department as well. So what lead sources should be in this new department, what price list should be associated, and the product segment and categories, which one should be associated to this new department. Now that we touched on product segment and category, I want to, I want to touch on what we need to know if you add any new segments or categories. We need to know which department they're associated to. Product segment and category are department driven. So like antifreeze, that's going to be associated to a specific department. We want to make sure that we capture that correct information for you. Now departments, product, and segments. Like I said, they're all very intertwined. But a question you might be asking is, well, how does how does it affect me as a manager? How does that? Why is that important? Well, department product and se uh, product category and product segment they really break down the information. It's a way to filter the information within CRM. So to break it down by field department or lubricants department and then further break down that department by which product segment, what are they buying? Are they buying antifreeze? Are they buying additives? Are they adding gr buying grease? And then product category, are they looking at, is it a Chevron product? Is it an in-house product? Is it maybe another, another type of product, so like a shell product, for example? This is how you can break down that information and pull the data out of CRM that matters to you. So within department, the various areas that department affects is in the opportunity section. As I showed you, for opportunity and lead, when we went over that sales process, department is a key factor in determining how the opportunity, the different product segments that are available, the different lead sources that are available. So that allows you to break down opportunity and lead further. And then quote, quotes associated with opportunity. So you want to make sure your quote and the products you're adding to that quote are along the same department lines. So that's another area in which department appears. Order history. Your order history comes directly from your back office system and we want to make sure we narrow that order history down and allow you to know which department that was associated to. So when you're pulling that information out, you know how your fuels department's doing, you know how your lubricants department's doing. And then share of wallet and competitor share of wallet. Each, each competitor we have, they buy or they sell to our customers and they're selling in a specific product segment and then also a specific department. We want to capture that information so we know which portion of the share of wallet is going to which department and then also which product segment. Speaking of product segments, as I showed you, opportunity bef uh, before, opportunity can be broken down further by product segment. What areas are they buying for that opportunity. What are they looking to go into? It's nice that we know fuel, but what specific product segment and fuel are they buying? Are they looking to buy? So it gives you more analytical items. Again, order history, we want to know what order, what product segment they're ordering from. And then the product. What product segment? Is it an additive product? Is it an antifreeze product? Is it a grease product? We want to make sure we know that information. Again, a leads back to analytics for you as managers. And as I touched on, a competitor share of wallet and share of wallet overall. What part of that share of the wallet do we own? So for this product segment, what do we own? What does our competitor own? And product segment is a required item. We need to have department and we need to have product segment. Um, those are two required fields when setting our required items when setting up an oil and gas program. Product category, on the other hand, 
is not mandatory. That's completely optional. But it does affect order history and product. It just allows you to break it down that one step further. So if you only want to pull out the product categories that are Chevron, you can pull that information out. If you want to know, okay, of all the order history we've done this year, what's had that product category of Chevron? Okay, pull that information out. I know all those are related to Chevron. Now I have that information in front of me. Speaking of order history, order history is an extremely huge part of analytics for you guys, um, for you as managers. It allows you to understand what your customers are ordering, understand their patterns, and to help your users get in front of them to get them to buy more. As I see, order history can be broken down by product segment and product category. Those two are department specific. We have to know that department if you ever add a product segment or category. As I stated, product segments required, product category is optional. And they help you further break down order history so you know where the orders are coming from. The next portion in order history that I want to touch on is a multiplier. Each product has a multiplier option that is set through the data load. This can be zero, it could be 20. If it's zero, it simply means you're, you're not multiplying by anything. Actually, it would be a one because you're multiplying it by itself, so it would be that set number that comes in. Now, the reason I bring this up is because if you're in your back office system, it's set up to be drums. But in CRM, you want it to be reflected in gallons. You just set a multiplier, so let's say there's one drum for every 55 gallons. You would just do the decimal point that equals that as your multiplier. It would calculate that information, and then in the field of total multiplied volume, it would spit out what the gallons would be for that, for that drum. Now, the reports and dashboards that we at Ledview Partners have set up for you, we utilize that total multiplied volume field to make sure you're getting the most accurate information. Now later on I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own charts, dashboards, reports. This is a key item to keep in mind. So if you're pulling volume or units, you want to make sure you're looking at a total multiplied volume field. That way you're getting the most accurate information. Lead source. I touched on this briefly um, in our sales process portion. Lead source is exclusive to the lead entity. Obviously, you can tell that based on the name, but the reason it's so important is because it has unique options based on the selected department. So if you really wanted to break down fuels and you do different items for fuels, um, you send out a monthly newsletter, you send out an email blast, you have different marketing campaigns that affect different departments, you can set up those lead sources so for those various marketing items that you've sent out based on department. That way, if you want to know, hey, we've got a lot of really big opportunities coming in for fuel, wonder what's been dri driving that information, that those leads coming in, getting qualified and buying from us. You can pull those opportunities back to lead source and understand exactly where they're coming from. If you want to add any new lead sources uh, to CRM, simply email us here at Ledgeview Partners. Let us know what departments you want that lead source to be visible for. We'll take care of the rest. The next portion, I'm sure for everybody on the phone, is your favorite part of your year, loading goals. Loading goals can, can be very cumbersome and very time consuming. Completely agree and completely understand that. And that's because we break down that data so much that you're goals are set for your customers and they can very easily see how they're doing versus their goals. I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks and then also show you how to load your goals. So you would want to start off by navigating to workplace and then going to documents. Within documents, document 900, it's an integration file layout for energy solution. It's going to look very, very familiar for most of you. This is the Excel spreadsheet that you filled out for Steve when he first set up your own gas environment. 
you're only going to care about the goals tab. That's all you need to do in this spreadsheet. And down at the bottom of the screen here, you can see what that spreadsheet's going to look like. So we're going to start off with owner. Owner can be confusing. You don't want to put in their name. You want to put in their employee ID. So in that master user list that we send you, that's going to show you every employee's ID in the same column as their name. That way you can easily look that information up. You could also look it up through CRM as well. Industry. Only enter the industry for new accounts. If it's an existing account or if it's a new share of wallet, don't worry about putting in the industry. When we upload the goals, the code that we set up is smart enough to look into that current account and grab its industry. If you put it in there, there's going to be an error that will be associated with that. Product category and product segment are two fields on here. As I mentioned, they're associated to departments, and that information associated um, is located in the settings section of CRM. That way you can simply look up the product categories and segments that you have. As you can see here in the yellow section here, TA, Q1 percentage, and then Q2, Q3, and Q4, you want to make sure those percentages add up to 100. You can put in 100, but if it doesn't actually add up to it, you're going to receive an error. You want to double check your math, make sure everything's correct. If you have a new account, don't put in new share of wallet. Because if it's a new account, everything's going to be flowing to that new account. So it will not have any new share of wallet. Always, whether it's new account, new share of wallet, always fill in the, ye the yellow total annual section. You want to make sure that's always filled out. And then save the file as a .csv file. It's called a common delimited file. It's very important because that's what's needed to, to make sure it uploads correctly into CRM and you don't get any errors. That's how you set up your Excel sheet. Once you have that set up, you're going to want to navigate back into CRM and navigate to Workplace. At the very bottom will be the Sales Goal Upload Wizard. I'm just touching on this briefly, and I'm going to go into CRM and actually show you this portion. In the end to the first date of the fiscal year, this must be the first date of your fiscal year. Because if you do not put that first date in there, you're going to receive an error. And then you'll browse for your CSV file. Once it's uploaded, you'll click Next. And then I'll go into CRM now and show you how to do that. So from our main drop-down menu, we go to Workplace, Sales Goal Upload Wizard. And then as this is loading, this can take a little bit of time to load because there's a lot of customized information behind here, and we're putting in a lot of information that will be processed into CRM. So right here, enter the first date of your fiscal year. For our purposes, I'm just going to put in 8-1. And then you browse for your CSV file. So right here, my test CSV. And then click Next. That went very, very quickly. That's because I have a test Excel spreadsheet. Mine probably has about five fields, or five columns, excuse me. It's not going to have a whole lot of information in there. That's why it's loading so quickly. If yours does take longer, don't panic. It's just because you have a lot more information. And then some errors are going to spit back out here. So you must choose the start of a fiscal year. 8 one's not the start of my fiscal year in my demo environment. And then it, and it's telling me that. Line 1, 8 one 2016. I put in wrong information. It's letting me know exactly what I did incorrectly. And it's also saying my headers are incorrect. So my headers don't match what was set up in that 900 document. So don't change any of those column headers. If you change any of those, you're going to get an error. And then if you also already have existing goal records for the fiscal year, it's going to let you know, hey, you already entered some goals here. It's going to be deleted, basically, when you fix these other errors and click Upload. You're, com you're committing into it and agreeing that, you can, that you're going to delete the old goal records. 
Now I'm going to go over a few errors that you're commonly going to receive and how to fix them. So a common error is account number is invalid. And then again, it'll give you the line and the value of the account number. This simply means, again, the account number does not exist in CRM or it's inactive. Very similar to the data load error. All you simply have to do is make sure you have the correct account number listed in your Excel file. Once you correct that, re-upload, the error will go away. Owner, so the user ID number, does not match the owner on the account. So it's going to give you the line, the value you entered, and then the associated salesperson ID number. So what this is saying is, in CRM, Josh, who's employee ID 15, owns this account. And you're entering employee ID 14, which happens to be me, Mike Dodds. So if you're looking at that going, wow, I really thought Mike owned this. Let me go in and CRM and check. And then you see that Josh owns it. You're going to want to reassign that to Mike. That way it's accurate. Or maybe you simply typed in 14 when you meant to put in 15. Just correct it in your Excel file. Re-upload. The error will go away. I touched on this before. I'll touch on it one more time. Industry should not be entered if new business is blank. Simply what that means is, if you have industry listed, it must be a new account. If it's in, if you're just filling out total annual or new share of wallet, must leave the industry blank, or you're going to get this error. The last error I want to go over is a record with specific values is in the file more than once. This simply means you have a duplicate role. I know when you bring up the goal section, it only lists five in that format. So a lot of what I've done and a lot, a lot of users have done is they'll copy and paste that all the way down. There are times where you can copy and paste something uh, after you put in information and it's going to be duplicated. Just find that line because it will list it for you. Delete the line. Re-upload. Now that we touched on how to upload goals, big part that is affected by that is new accounts and new share of wallet. We got a really, really exciting change coming down the pipeline, and I want to let you know about it. For new accounts, the rule that exists today is all order history. So that order date in your order history, if it's in the current fiscal year of the same year a new account start date is, then it's considered new account. Now, all order history records are considered a new share of wallet if the product segment has not been purchased in a select number of years. The reason I say select number of years is because that is chosen by you as the marketer. Um, when you're setting up the oil and gas product with Steve, um, that's one of the questions that he asks. How long back do you, how far back do you want to look to determine if this is a new share of wallet for that product segment? So any orders during the, the current fiscal year that you are in, for that particular product segment, will be considered new share of wallet. So basically anything from that first order date of that new product segment forward will be considered new share of wallet. We're making a big change. It makes it a lot simpler to understand. These changes are taking place September 10th and 11th. For new account, and again, the September 10th and 11th, that's what we have scheduled for this to take place. If for any reason this is has to be changed, um, for any reason whatsoever, we will be sure to let you know. But as of right now, that's the date we have the schedule to take place. So when you come in on Monday, all your reports, when you run them, will be updated to reflect the new information. In terms of new accounts, they will now be tracked as that order date within that order history that comes in, if that is within 12 months of the start date of the account, so if the start date of your account is 8-1-2015, and they placed an order any time between 8-1-15 and 7-31-16, that's considered to be a new account. So for one full year, any orders are new account. For new share of wallet. We want to get past the new accounts. We want to have 
any orders that are placed 12 months after the start date of the account, they'll be considered new share of wallet as long as they meet that select number of years. So if it's no longer a new account and they haven't ordered that product segment, and let's say for our example, one year, then it's new share of wallet. So from that first order date, let's say that order date is 8115. Any orders for that product segment from 8115 to 73116 will be considered a new share of wallet. That way, your users are now getting appropriate credit for their new accounts and new share of wallet that they're bringing in. And this was based on a lot of great feedback that we got from managers like yourselves on the phone. Um, we wanted to let you know about this exciting change that's coming down the pipeline. Next, we're going to go into more of the fun analytical portion of today's training session. This is CRM data methods. I'm going to go over all the various data methods that you can use to pull data out of CRM. So advanced find. Advanced find and views are usually correlated. One thing to note with advanced find is it's a one-time data set. So if you want to pull information for orders from by Christina as the owner from 7-1 to 7-31, 16, it's a one-time pull. You're not going to go back and look at that. And it's not dynamic. Now, a view is something you're going to want to go back and repeatedly look at. So, for example, I want to know for my sales team, what are all the opportunities that are closed in the next 30 days? I want to know that every time I go into this view, I want to look at the next 30 days. That's dynamic, and it's going to be viewed consistently. Dashboards, you view items graphically in charts and tables. You can combine like data sets. I highly recommend putting in if you're looking at you as a sales manager creating a sales manager type dashboard where you're looking at you know activities, opportunities, leads, things that affect your users. That's like data sets. Comparison charts. You can create a chart that's looking at okay, what are the opportunities that are closing in the next 30 days? I want to look at those by owner. Well, Josh has got 10 that are closing in the next 30 days, but Mike's only got two. Wonder why Mike's at such a low point. Let me follow up with him. So that's a comparison chart that you can look at. Report wizard, you can group data together. So if you wanted to group items by owner, you can show all the data by owner. So, you know, opportunities closed in the last 60 days, grouped by owner. And then you can sum up the revenue. So it's going to show for Josh, in the last 60 days, he's closed $200,000 in business. Mike, again, he's slacking a little bit, and he's only closed one opportunity for $10,000. That's grouping, and that's numeric value summation. And then you can get a grand total at the very end of all the opportunities closed in the last 60 days for your sales team. Charts and data together, you can put a chart that appears before the data set, so the table, or you can have it where you click into the chart, it's going to pull up the data table. Now, I'm sure you've all heard me say this and probably get tired of me saying it. If you're going too far in which the, the logic of CRM does not apply, so if you're looking to go two, three entities deep to, find, to pull information together, probably heard me say that CRM isn't smart enough to go that distance. That's unique logic. So if unique logic is required, you want to go down the road of a custom report. Custom reports, they're reports that you'll distribute. So like if you're having an annual, an annual meeting and you want to basically pretty up a report, change the font, change the colors, that's going to be custom. Comparison with calculated fields. If you're rolling up calculated information, like you are in report 100, that's a custom report. Filtering after the report is generated. So we can all do the filtering, the advanced find type filtering, before a report is run. But once it's run, you can't filter the data further. That would require a custom report. Columns not related to the data. So if you want to connect lead source to order history, there's no direct connection. You would need to do a custom type report. 
related records with no data. One of my favorite reports that Steve and his team put together is accounts with no opportunity or no um, activity. That's a great, great report, but it's custom. The reason for that is because is you're telling CRM to look at an account and then find related information that doesn't exist. It's going to come back and say, error, it doesn't exist. I can't find anything. Now reports, this is an item that we've sent off um, to you as managers and, and to the users. And we can, if you ever want this information, we can send this to you. I'm just going to touch on some key information that would, key reports that would be great for you as a sales manager. But this shows what information am I looking for and what report should I use? So sales number by owner is a really great one for a sales manager. You can look at monthly sales number by owner or salesperson. That just depends on how you designated them in CRM. There's two different options. And you can do sales by owner and product segment. So a particular product segment, a particular owner, and you can take a look at their information. So that's a really great report for managers. Another great, two great reports are reports 340 and 350. Salesperson goal versus actual. So those goals we talked about, if you want to know, hey, how's my sales team doing in terms of their, their goals versus what's actually come in, run report 340. It'll take you five minutes to pull in all that information that you need to see how your team's doing. And then if you want to know, hey, you know, Josh has been doing really, really well this year. I want to see how he's doing compared to last year. So if you take in, you look at, okay, January 1st, to July 1st last year and look at that same time period of this year. You're going to see how Josh did last year, how he did this year, and the variance, the difference, whether he's gone down in sales or up in sales. That way you can know exactly how much better he's doing instead of just on that gut feeling. And then again, like I said, reports 520 and 530, those are the accounts without. So accounts without an active contact and then counts without an open activity or opportunity. Really allows you to see what's out there and what data is missing. So then you can get, talk to those salespeople and go, hey, notice these accounts don't have any activities or opportunities. I think we need to get in contact with them, try and get some new business rolling or see how they're doing. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into CRM and we're gonna build a report wizard. And a report wizard is just a fancy way of saying creating a, an in-house CRM report. So right from workplace where we are, let's go workplace reports. Now the report that we're going to build is it's going to analyze opportunities that were closed in the last 60 days. And then we're going to group them by owner and lead source and then sum up the actual revenue and then add in some columns. So once we get to the report section, we'll click on new. And it'll bring up report wizard right away. So we just click report wizard. Start a new report. Click next. And then just name your report. So closed in last 60 days. And do opportunities. Our primary record type. It's going to be opportunities. All I'm doing is starting to type in opportunities. I find it and I click tab. We're not going to have a related record type. All we're looking at is opportunities. And then we click next. It takes a little bit to build here because it's bringing up the advanced find. One thing you're always going to notice uh, with advanced with new report wizards, it's going to have a built-in filtering section. If it's not anything you want, just click delete. So for opportunities, as I stated, we're looking at opportunities closed in the last 60 days. So actual close date is last 60 days. So we're going to do last X days. And then X will be 60. And then we want to look at their status. Because we obviously don't want to look at and I typed in the incorrect item, so status, and we want to make sure we're only looking at one because obviously open ones haven't closed yet, and if they've lost, they don't have any actual revenue. So we're going to click 
oh, uh, excuse me, we're going to click on one. And all I'm doing is double clicking it, and it'll move right over to the selected values. Click OK. And then we'll click Next. And this is where we're going to able to add in our grouping and columns. So grouping is always going to be in the top section. So click here to add grouping. And what I want to group by is the owner. So I just type in owner under the column section. Not going to do any summing with owner. So click OK. And then our secondary grouping is going to be by lead source. This is where we need to go into record type. And we're going to go down to the middle of the page. We're going to change this to originating lead. So that lead that generated our opportunity, that's what we're looking back at. We want to know the lead source. So we click on lead source. Again, no summing information, so we click OK. Those are our two groups. Next, we're going to add our columns. Our first column is actual revenue. So I started typing in actual. I found revenue. Now our summary type. As I say in this demo, we're going to look at sum. So we're summing up our actual revenue. So click OK. Now we're going to add our other columns. Our other columns are going to be account name. So just type in account. And then click OK. Our next one's going to be opportunity topic, which is already selected. And then the actual close date which again is also already selected. And then we're going to look at actual units and actual gross profit. So actual gross profit, and we're also going to sum gross profit. And then click OK. And then the last one we're going to add is actual units. So if we go to actual units, and then under summary type, go to sum. Click OK. Now I added actual units and gross profit out of order. So what I'm going to do is I've highlighted actual units, and I'm going to click to the left to move it over. Actual revenue, I actually want this to appear after the topic. So I click on that and choose click to the right. Now we have everything set, so I'll click Next. We only want to look at the table in this, in this scenario, so we're going to click Next. Now it's going to give us a report summary. Just click Next. This next portion takes a little bit of time because it's actually building your report. Now click Finish. Now your report is ready to run. So you click Run Report. And this can take a little bit of time to build because it's churning through so much data that's in CRM. And then once it comes up, you can see here the different groupings. We're grouping by owner, so by myself here. Not specified, that just means the opportunity was not created from a lead. They went into an existing account, created a new opportunity. Now, he, and it's going to show you, okay, I got $25 off of Bob's Auto Company. They bought 225 units, and the actual revenue was $100. So all that information is right there. So everything for not specified shows there. Then for bid list, Wow, I got 13,000 from the bid list lead source. That's great. Maybe I should put a little bit more time and effort into the bid list uh, marketing campaign because it's doing a lot of great, it's building a lot of great revenue for us. And then at the very bottom, it's going to give you a grand total for Michael Dodds. He's got actual revenue. I've got actual revenue of almost $90,000. And obviously, my gross profit is way off, and the reason for that. We're in a test environment. Not going to reflect how the real world exists. So this is just test data that's going in. So now we're going to close out our report and our report wizard. I'm going to jump back into our PowerPoint presentation. Now a lot of you, I went over some reports and some of those key reports to put to frequently look at as sales managers. Now let's say you have your own or you like those three that I went over that you consistently like to look at. But you don't like filtering through all the various information and all the various reports. Simply create a view to look at your top reports. Pick your top reports, then open Advanced Find. Set the look for to reports, as you can see here. Then go Report Equals and use the Lookup feature to find your top reports. I recommend putting the columns of the name of the report 
the type of the report, when it was modified on or created on, just lets you know when it was edited or created, and then any description you added. Then save the view. That way you can always go back that and consistently look at your top views instead of going through all those other reports that are out there. Next we're going to look at a dashboard. So I'm going to jump back into CRM and we're going to create a dashboard. I have all these views and charts already created. So one key item to note is once you create a view, I'm going to show you how to create a chart quick. So if you wanted to create a chart for your dashboard, and let's say we wanted to look at estimated revenue for each salesperson that's closing in the next 30 days. Well, I created a view of opportunities closing in the next 30 days. So then right here on the right, I just click on charts. Now it's going to jut out to the information for my chart. And I'm going to click this plus sign for new. And all I need to do here is I'm going to do the opportunity as topic or set the column as topic, and then we're also going to look at the estimated revenue. So if we look at estimated revenue, and actually I'm looking at owner, so I wanted to change this one to owner. I apologize, the horizontal one needs to be owner, the top, the vertical column needs to be estimated revenue. So that way, now we're looking at the estimated revenue of each owner that's closing in the next 30 days. Once that's set, everything's ready to go. You can change your chart type. So if you want to do a bar or column or a pie chart, you can change any of that information right here. Then just click Save. And then click your X button to kind of expand it and give you a nicer, cleaner look. The great thing is, all I'm doing is pulling estimated revenue by owner. It's building that chart based off of the view I'm on. So if I change this to closed opportunities, change closed opportunities, still the same type of chart, the data just changed. So now we have different information, same chart, but it's being built off of different information. Now I'm going to show you how to share a dashboard once we create it. But to share, you want to make sure you share any views, personal views that are being used, and personal charts that are being used in the dashboard. And for charts, click on the overflow menu, these three dots, and click share. Then you're just going to click add user and team. We're going to look up Josh. Click on Josh, click select, click add. Now you can set your security permissions. Write means he can edit the chart in any way. I don't want him to delete it, and I don't want him to change ownership. But he can share it with anyone else he'd like to. So then click Share. It's not going to send over any notification to Josh that he has a new chart. Just simply send him an email letting him know. So for our dashboards, if you go into Sales drop-down, Dashboards, we're going to start building our dashboard here. And due to time constraints, I'm just going to show you how to add a couple of them and then how to save it. So if we click on New, it's going to bring up our layout. I always recommend that three-column regular dashboard. It gives you six different items to be able to populate the dashboard with. So for a chart, if you just click on this little chart icon with the plus sign, it's going to ask you to choose the record type. So we're going to look at that opportunity one that we just created. So we're going to go to the record type of opportunity. We're going to scroll down to our view which is closing in the next 30 days. And our chart is going to be estimated revenue by owner. So now we've set our record. We're looking at opportunities. And our chart, we want to show the estimated revenue of each salesperson closing in the next 30 days. So our view is closing in the next 30 days. Our chart is estimated revenue by owner. Click Add. And then you get a little preview of what the chart will look like. Next, I'm going to show you how to add a list. So to add a list, it's going to give you this little list icon here. You click on list. This one's a little bit simpler to add. All you're doing, looking at is the record type and view. So in our scenario, we're looking at the chart, a list of accounts without any orders. 
So if we go to accounts, and then under views, we're going to go accounts with no order history, and then click add. Now this will come up blank, don't panic, that's exactly how it's supposed to come up. Once you save this and close the dashboard editor, you'll be able to see this dashboard. So we're going to name our dashboard, click save, and then click close. And it will take just a minute to click close, and sometimes if it doesn't do that, just click on dashboards, and we'll go back into our dashboard drop down and take a look at the demo which was the name of the dashboard we just created. It'll take a minute to turn all that data because it's pulling in a chart from the opportunity screen, it's pulling in an account list, so it takes a little bit of time. And there's your dashboard. And you just follow those same steps to fill out the remaining four sections. Next, I want to touch on advanced find. You guys have heard me talk about this frequently. I, I love advanced find. I think it, it's going to be your best friend. It is personally my best friend with CRM. What it does is it allows you to filter the data to the specific information you're looking at and then give that data a voice. And what I mean by that, is giving your data a voice is you've filtered it to a specific section. Now what do you want to present out to the world? What columns do you want to show? What information do you want reflected in that view? That's how you're giving your data a voice. Before we go over our demo, I want to touch on some best practices and tips um, for advanced finds and views. There will be time when you come up with zero results. Don't panic. Just go back and analyze your filters. There could be a time where you put contains data instead of does not contain data, or does not equal instead of equals. Just check your filters and make sure everything is set correctly. And always remember, related entities, have to ha they will have a connection back to the current entity. Simply what that means is with leads, when you qualified that lead, it created an account, a contact, and an opportunity. All three of those have a connection right back to the lead, so they're related entities. Now if you add a column that's in that related entity, so like a lead source, when you're looking at opportunities, you cannot sort by that column. It's a limitation of CRM. You cannot add a column to an advanced find. Uh, view if there's not a relationship. So lead source or lead in order history. There's no connection there. There's no relationship. So you will not be able to add a column. Or if there's a one-to-many relationship. Simply what that means is if you've ever gone into accounts and gone, okay, I want to look up this particular account and I want to look at all the contacts that are associated to it. Well, in advanced find, when you pull up the results, you notice how it only has one cell, essentially, for each piece of information associated to that account. If you have 100 accounts or two accounts, or two contacts, excuse me, you're not going to be pulled into the one section. That's a one-to-many relationship. That's why that's not a column that you can add. Keep your views clean. Even the most experienced CRM users fall into this. You'll, you probably have seen it in our demo environment. There's a lot of different personal views. You want to keep that clean. You want to make sure that you are pulling unused views out. And then if you have an idea of creating a view, make sure you don't already have one. Or you can't just tweak an existing one that's not really being used all that often. And views can be changed and updated through advanced find. Any personal view that you update and change in advanced find, just save it, it'll be the same advanced find you just, or same view, you just tweaked it. Now if you're editing a system view, you can only save that as a personal view once you make a change. System views can only be changed by an administrator. Now we're going to jump into advanced find. Our scenario today that we're looking at is we want to look at all the top opportunities of your team. The characteristics is the opportunity is going to be in the presentation stage or the activate and transition. The estimated revenue is going to be over 300000 or its estimated close date will be within the next 30 days. And you have a completed appointment, email, or phone call activity. And then we're going to set the columns and, sh and share this. So we jump back into CRM and I click on advanced find. 
We're going to set this to opportunities for our look for. And then what we're going to look at is we want to make sure we set the sales stage to equal. So then we click on our three dots here, our overflow menu, presentation, and activate and transition. So click OK. Next, we had a caveat of over 300,000 or estimated close date within the next 30 days. So estimated revenue. We scroll down to estimated revenue. We're going to set this is to is greater than or equal to 300,000. And then we're going to look at estimated close date. And we're looking at the next 30 days. So next X days, X being 30. Now since this is an either or scenario, we select these two rows, click group or. Our next one had to do with activity. So we want to look at the related activity. So we scroll down to related and then find activities regarding. We're only interested in completed activities. So we go to activity status, equals, our three dots, and we're looking at completed. So click OK. And we only care about a completed appointment, email, or phone call activity. So activity type, equals, appointment, email, or phone call. Then we click OK. Now our column, our filtering criteria is set, and then we click edit columns. And we're looking at the opportunity topic, the potential customer. We don't care at this time about estimated units, so we'll click remove. We do want to know the estimated revenue. We do want to know the sales stage, and we do want to know the estimated close date and owner. So these other items we're going to remove. So all I'm simply doing is clicking on them and clicking remove. So once we have all of these removed, we're just going to set the order how we'd like them to be. So topic and potential customer, I like. And then we're going to move owner towards the top, so in front of potential customer. All I do is, like in the report, highlight it and click our arrows. And then we're looking at sales stage and then estimated revenue, or excuse me, estimated close date and estimated revenue. So then we click OK. And then we'll run our results. And now you can see all this information is showing in here. We've given the data a voice. It's actually speaking to us, showing us what's closing in the next 30 days and what revenue we're looking at. So now if we want to consistently view this view, we're going to click on Save As. And we're going to change our name to Opti's Closing in the next 30 days. And then click Save. And now we want to share this with our colleagues. So if we have other people on the executive team that we want to share this with, we just click on Saved Views. We find our Opti's Closing in the next 30 days. Check mark it. Click on Save Views here at the top and click on this share icon. Now this is going to look exactly the same as when you were sharing your chart. So it'll be the same steps we went over. And we're going to close advanced find. I'm going to go back into our PowerPoint. Some other advanced find capabilities. You can do bulk edit capabilities if you export the information into an Excel spreadsheet, make changes, and then re-import. You can select a various number of records, and you can do a bulk edit right in the system there. You can bulk assign, add to marketing list. So if you do any of the marketing entity, you can add them to the marketing list. You can bulk deactivate and activate records. All this information is in the upper uh, ribbon. And then send emails and create quick campaigns. And then run reports. If you notice in reports, you're always doing an advanced fine filtering. Um, just simply click the Run Reports, and it'll pull up the report for you. Extracting data, you can do that right through Advanced Find, or one of the views that we created, or the reports that you've created. So 
Advanced find, views, and reports are three key ways to extract data from CRM. To note, advanced find and, and a view, you're exporting it to Excel. With a report, you can go to Excel, a PDF, or Word. Now, importing new records. I highly recommend that you contact us here at CRM Support and we can help walk you through the scenario that you have and we'll get the records imported for you. But some best practices, when you create the Excel spreadsheet of the items you want to import, have all required columns. So all those business required fields, make sure you have each one of the column in the spreadsheet. And that's for record creation. If you're doing up, updating existing records, only include the columns that you're updating. Any unnecessary columns just bog down the import and can, cause, can potentially cause issues. The file must be a .csv for lead creation, but it must not be CSV for updates. That's a very key thing to note. Outlook client versus web client. I know you've probably heard me hammer this a few times before as well too. Um, Outlook client, um, there's a lot of pros to it. Um, it can track and set regard emails right from your inbox which means it can track it and put that email right into CRM for you. It's convenient. You're already in Outlook. You can jump into CRM while in Outlook. And you can see who the email is associated to. Once you set it to regard a particular record, you can see who that email is set to regard to. However, it does have some cons. It's not as efficient. All, uh, all the efficiencies that you have in the web client in terms of navigation, that upper blue ribbon bar, are not there in the Outlook client. It has lag time. You're connecting from CRM that for most of you is online in the cloud or on a server that's on-premise. And you're taking that and you're pushing it into Outlook through a plugin. So there can be times where it's a little bit laggy. It does have clunkier navigation because the newer navigation is more intuitive. It can cause Outlook to crash. Again, you're putting a very, very robust plugin into Outlook. And it opens records in, in the web version without navigation efficiencies. So that blue ribbon bar is blank except for a global search. The web client is very, very efficient. has some great easy to navigate features like recent views, global search, quick create, a lot of great items. Faster load times. You're not pulling it through through a plugin. It's existing out online or on your on-prem server. Intuitive user interface, simply what that means is the way it's set up, the way you view it is more intuitive to how websites are set up today. However, the biggest con is you cannot track and set regard emails in CRM. Now everybody's been, most everyone has been moved to CRM 2016 update one or 2016. If you're on 2016, download the 2016 Outlook client and use update 1.0 for online or on-premise. And if you're on-premise, 1.0 on the server side as well. If you're on 2016 update 1, install update 1 for online and on-premise as well. It's going to give you the most efficient, best working Outlook client. Now I'm going to quickly jump into email and show you how to track and set regard your emails. So if we uh, jump into Excuse me, I'm just going to jump into my Outlook. Sorry, it just took a minute to pop up here. So for our first one, if we want to track, we just simply click on the email and click track. If we want to do set regarding, click on your email, click on set regarding. It's going to pull up a lookup view. So if I want to pull this to an account, and I want to associate this to Fairview, just type in the name, check mark, click add. Now it's regarding Fairview Manufacturing. Now if we jump back to our, our PowerPoint presentation and jump on some quick best practices. As I stated, the Outlook client is best for tracking and setting regard, set regarding emails. The web client is best for doing CRM work with its um, more intuitive user interface um, navigation, faster load times. That's why I recommend doing it as a hybrid. 
do everything you need to do in CRM in terms of records and information in the web client. Any tracking and set regarding of emails, appointments, do that through the Outlook client. Now if you're sending over 100 emails at one time, sending those to the Outlook client from CRM is not a good idea. You want to make sure you have Service Site Sync or Email Router. Again, this is something we can help you set up. Uh, set the sync with CRM at the shortest amount of time allowed. This is in your personal options. And it will list on the side under Synchronization tab the minimum time allowed between syncs. That's set by your system administrator. And I highly recommend doing set regarding instead of track. Because if you know who the email is associated to, put that information in. It's one less step. Some quick troubleshooting tips. Um, the following are signs that the Outlook needs to be looked at by us here at CRM Support. It crashes when you open it. Your track and set regarding buttons are grayed out. If you try to access the CRM client and it says trying to connect to CRM, that means that the Outlook client plugin is having an issue. We need to take a look. Any error messages, anything you see in terms of an error, contact us. And also always make sure when you send us a user that their email address that you send us matches their Outlook email address. Or if it ever changes, let us know. That way we can update the user. I'm going to jump back into um, Microsoft Outlook. Down here at the bottom where it says connected to Microsoft Exchange, right here, that should say connected to. If it ever says online with Microsoft Exchange, let us know. Or if your CRM link, which you use to navigate into CRM, is not showing in that lower ribbon bar, that means there's an issue. Next, I want to touch on the iPad app. The Oil and Grass product, description, product subscription includes the iPad app. It's great for your salesmen to stay connected while on the road and gather key information. So if they're going into a meeting, they can quickly review what the account is and then update their notes right after. You can also plan their sales trip, so territory management for accounts they own. They can plan that before they go on the road or while they're on the road. Now what the iPad is not used for. Updating accounts you do not own. The iPad app is intended for salespeople on the road looking at their accounts. It's really not intended for sales managers to check teams activities and opportunities. The reason for that is you're putting a lot of information into an app and not everything will sync and connect. So it was really intended just for the salespeople. So again, territory management, not for all accounts in your area, for your accounts. And then reviewing closed leads and opportunities. Once they're closed, they're removed out of the iPad app. So you can go back into CRM, web version or Outlook, and review that information for analysis. I'm going to quickly show you how to set up a new user um, in CRM. So if we jump back into CRM, from our main dropdown, we go to settings, and then we're going to look at mobile settings. So if you ever have a new user that needs to utilize the iPad app, these are the steps you'll take. So if you click on new, it'll load this information, change the owner to the person that you're setting up, keep wipe as false or as no, because if you change that to yes, it's wiping out all their information. Sync my records. Number of months of closed activities. So how many months of closed activities you want to keep in CRM, how many months of order history you want to see in CRM, and how many months of notes you want to keep in CRM. So anything older than that amount of time that you put in will be removed. Once you have that filled out, simply click Save and Close. Now we're going to jump back into our PowerPoint presentation. Now once the user is set up, I'm going to leave this in here. I'm just going to touch on this briefly. You'll get a recording of this later on today. Um, feel free to refer back to this. But a key thing to note is once you install the new app, go to the general settings in your iPad, um, Profiles and Device Management, click on the LedgeView Partners app, and then trust the app. And then once you open it, enter the URL, the username and password, 
online orgs, leave your domain blank. If you're on-premise, enter the domain. And then click Connect and Sync. Some troubleshooting tips. If your user continually receives an iPad app opening page requesting login info, keeps happening after you click Sync, means they're not set up with mobile settings. If you're having syncing problems, check the internet connection and then resync. If it's any more issues than that, contact us at CRM Support. We may ask for your logs. To give us your logs, in the iPad app, scroll to Settings. Halfway down the page after you click Settings is Send Logs. Click on Send Logs. CRM Support at you Partners is pre-populated. Simply send that information to us. It will help us with troubleshooting. Now, Suggestive Cell, new, fantastic program within, within uh, CRM. I'm not going to go in how to, how to utilize this, but I want to touch on the information in case you decide to you want to have your users utilize this, what information we need. We need a main product segment. So if you're looking at additives, so if your customer is buying additives, what other items do you want to sell? What other product segment do you want to sell? So if they're buying additives, I want to offer antifreeze and greases. Let us know that information. We'll set it up and then any description you want to appear in the suggestive cell section for that. Lastly, I want to end with importance of utilizing your data. Data is stationary. Data is numbers and names and dates. With CRM, it can dynamically tell you a story. What I mean by that is you can find patterns in CRM utilizing reports and charts and dashboards can utilize this data to motivate your sales team. So understanding what they're struggling in, help them overcome those issues. If they're consistently losing an item to a specific competitor, let's take a look at those and see how we can overcome those issues. Focus on important opportunities. Those ones that are closing in the next 30 days or that are over a certain revenue amount. Become more efficient in your day as a manager. There's a lot of data that you're asked to gather, a lot of data that you're needing to review. Being more efficient in allowing that data to work for you instead of working to get that data will allow you to help your users, your salespeople overcome their issues and be successful. Next I want to open it up to any questions. If you have any questions simply raise your hand or if you don't feel like, talk, uh, feel like talking to everyone you can just um, simply write in your questions. Do you have any questions out there, Josh? Okay. Well, we are getting to the edge of our time. If you guys ever, ever have any questions for us about how best to utilize CRM or want a little bit more personal information or personal training in terms of, hey, how do I do this? Simply contact us. We're always, always happy to help. I want to end today's call with saying how much I appreciate you guys as customers. Um, and always calling in and always being just fantastic customers that we love working with every day. I know I'm speaking for Josh in this as well. So thank you very much, and thank you for attending today's training session. Have a great day.